Hi everyone, this has been a struggle, some beginning of the video because I tried to record it now three times, I think. Anyway, I hope this will be the, the final attempt. So, today I want to show you a few examples of what you can create with my stamp sets. Now, firstly, I have uh, designed the four new sets, which are in the size A7. This is the Wildflowers collection and you have four designs in here. So you have the Buttercup, Pansy, Lavender and Waxflower. And then I can now also confirm that the FOTD, which stands for Face of the Day, and the Floral Set, which uh, are the um, A6 size, they will be back in stock last week of February. So that's quite exciting for those of you who haven't had a chance to get them and you want to use them because the way I designed these is you can use them together very nicely. And although they are slightly different style in terms of this being a finished illustration and these just being your kind of building blocks, you can totally create uh, beautiful things using all of them together. All right, so this, this is another example that I used the this set here, which is the FOTD to create this girl. And I used, what did I use here? Except for Pansy, I have used these three. But I will explain how I created that. I don't want this video to be too long, but you know me, I will end up probably doing another half an hour video. Okay, so let's look at these now. Okay, so just very briefly, I want to touch on these two at the top here. So here we have the buttercup. Now in the, um, the, the stamping uh, recommendations, you will see that there is um, something called Versamark uh, watermark ink that is recommended for if you want to avoid having your clear stem stained from the archival ink. So this is what will happen to the stems once you start using them with particularly a black archival ink. So this is a permanent waterproof ink that is designed to stay and last. So therefore, of course, it will stain your clear stems as well. However, if you want to keep them looking nice and clear, which I'll show you on those two stamp sets, which I have been using, but you can see the nice and clear. So what you do there, if you prefer, just stay away from the archival ink, black ink, and just use something like this. So Distress Ink in Tattered Rose, any other ink, I find the Oxide uh, Distress Ink, even these chalk inks, although they're harder to clean because of the consistency, but they will not stain, so they will come off with water. These ones, they, they will not come off very well at all and it is better not to use um, harsh cleansers for them because it can you know uh, deteriorate the the actual design so read on the back um, the recommendations and hopefully that will make more sense to you but this is just very quick to to explain to you what um, the difference here is. Now when you do use the Versa marking that's supposed to kind of prime your um, clear stamp and create like a protective layer because these are um, they are archival oil based ink so they create a nice little bit of like a conditioning uh, for your stamp and then after that you stamp it into the uh, presumably the black um, archival ink and that sort of creates a little shield between the clear stamp and the ink and therefore it kind of stains it less. It still will have some sort of staining there but not as harsh. Um, I personally don't prefer this technique simply because the stamping in my opinion is not as clear so I don't know this this flower here for example some parts of it are really crisp and clear and some are not and the reason is because this um, watermark ink is very juicy and it kind of uh, creates a thick coat of it on the stamp so then when you're going into the 
archival ink it just doesn't pick up that pigment as well I felt but maybe that's just something to get used to because normally I don't use it it's just something I wanted to try out uh, to share with you guys because I know that that is recommended but personally I don't mind having my stamps uh, stained like that at all because it's you know it is what it is they're meant to be used and loved and you can see it's been used so um, so yeah, so this one was stamped with the watermark ink and archival ink over the top of it and then this is just, so when I say on top, you just um, take your clear stamp, um, stick it or push it into the watermark ink and then give it a few seconds and then go into the archival ink and then stamp. This one is just archival ink on its own, so it's a little bit more crisper. And then here I'm using my favorite, which is the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Tattered Rose. And um, I find that that's just, uh, for me, I prefer that to black ink these days because you can do so much more. So here, for example, you can do a lot of layering, which you would not sort of be able to do with the black ink. You can just straight ahead without doing any uh, masking, um, stamp uh, on top of each other and then just line things out and leave whatever else is underneath and that way you know you can get away with a lot of things uh, and be very creative. And here then from this we went to this which is the same technique as this one here and basically I have lined out the flower and then watercolored it and that is what we have here. So here are a few examples of pretty much what not to do. <laughs> so this is just very basic black stamping, which I didn't do a great job with. But here we have um, the botanical title stamped, and I wanted to say what not to do. So the way I have to, I have done this because they are they are sort of cut in a long strip. What happens is they kind of it's easier to rock, and when I'm pressing them on paper to stamp, I kind of would do like a rocking motion, and that is something I would recommend not to do because the rocking that you do will make it thicker. So, all you need to do is just kind of stamp it and lift it, and that way you'll have a nice, sort of um, uh, thin line title which looks very nice. So just a little heads up. Okay, so here we have Pansy and the Pansy is right here. So here I'm just showing you a few examples what you could do. Here I have used the Tombow, um, the water, what are they called? The water soluble markers which are great to kind of substitute watercolor once in a while with. And then I also used a combination of Durvant. Let me just grab them. So this one here, Durvant Graphic Align Painter on the leaves. Then over here I used the Durvant Ink Tense Pencils. And I did a bit of um, doodling with the Posca. And then here I've done just uniposkers, so these are these markers here, which are super fun. I'll try to link them down below. It's a lovely set of these beautiful pink, orangey colors. I forgot what they're called, but they're really nice, as you can see here. And um, so they are matte, and you can go over each other. So you can see with the light pink, I went over the dark, and you can see that because they just layer on top of each other. And yeah, they have nice texture to them. This one I have done using my own watercolor set, which is also available at my Etsy. So this palette is called Lip and Cheek. It's been inspired by the classic lip stick colors. So the nude, red, pink and orange. And uh, yeah, so I've done here a number of colors. I've done the perfect peach. And what else did I, I think I might have mixed a little bit of the pink lemonade. This color here is, um, where is this one? 
This color is Naphtamide Maroon by Daniel Smith. One of my favorite colors, which I've mentioned a few times now. At the moment, quite obsessed with it. I love it with the with this set. It just kind of works really well. And some gold uh, doodling over the top. Okay, next one, I wanted to show you that you can build uh, bigger pieces with this sizing. So here's the wax flower. And you could build um, like a bouquet or, or a branch of these flowers and fill up however big your project is that you're working on, whether it's a card or um, like a greeting card or it's a bigger page in your art journal, you can create bigger pieces. All you need to do is just sort of build them uh, wherever you can and you can layer them over each other as well and it's not as visible if you're using a light um, ink to start off with and then just line everything over and that is to me floral zen doodling because there's so many lines to line over and it becomes very therapeutic and I really really enjoyed this. The next one is also quite fun so this has been inspired by uh, paper design like wrapping paper design or fabric designs so it's a continuation of a print so here I have gone um, straight in with the galaxy gold which is the dewdrop and it's the most stunning gold um, ink it's like a, a whole new revelation for me because I haven't had gold ink pads before and this one is just amazing the color is perfect the payoff is amazing it's just like liquid gold really um, and then I used the Uniposca in let me just grab it in this one which is a yellow and it's matte and beautiful and it kind of works really nice also I rotate so this is the buttercup again and I rotated it upside down and sometimes kind of changing the angle so that it kind of gives you a new look. But if you look this way, that's your buttercup right here. I mean, you could work it whichever way you want to. I wanted it to kind of look like it's falling down a little bit. So that's that. And the way I did it is actually... Uh, using first and second generation stamping and in some case also third but mostly second and the way you do this is you when you apply the ink onto the clear stamp you stamp it down and then lift it and stamp again and that's your second generation which means the image will be slightly more faded and going more into the background and it kind of looks like it's sort of the background it's not just the white paper but you can see a subtle stamp there so that's another trick you can do here this one is something I really enjoy is still being able to use these uh, wildflower stamps with the FOTD set because I love combining my girl faces with the um, with the flowers to me that's just pure joy so what I've done here is I used the lavender and created like a floral crown and she looks super bohemian and yeah I just love that sort of thing and uh, watercolors I used my set again a combination of I think it was a combination of two colors here so I've used the um, tropical sunset which is the orange and a bit of that pink lemonade for a little bit of pink and on the face, I have also used Tropical Sunset, Lips uh, is Tropical Sunset, and then a bit of the Perfect Peach for the skin tone. And that is it. Then I also stamped the individual lashes from this set here, from the FOTD set. These uh, little individual lashes, I created a nice big um, a statement eye look. And again, for the for the leaves, I used this Neftamide Maroon watercolor. And for the eyes, in case you are wondering, I used this beautiful turquoise graphic um, 
line painter and this is the Billy color so it's uh, it works quite nicely as well I'll bring it up a bit closer so you can have a look at the gold there we go and again sizing works perfect here so you still can create nice um, flowers and arrangements on these girls also you don't have to stamp the entire image you could stamp like use the ink up to here for instance and create more floral arrangements and crowns on there so you don't have to stamp the entire thing if that makes sense just use use it partially same thing as i have done here with the lavender i haven't stamped it all the way down i started from here and then as i went lower down i would just ink it up higher up and that means because there is no ink here you're not going to get anything on the face it's going to look like it's sort of sliding behind if that makes sense and again you don't need to use a mask um, which you can do but it doesn't have to happen then I have created these floral arrangements there is a tutorial on how to do that and I will try to put a card up here so you can have a look and um, there is a combination I'm using here so the vases are in fact let me just quickly show you from the FOTD set so this is the face base and the bun upside down like that and they make perfect little um, flower containers and then here I have used pansy and lavender so these two with the green foliage from the floral set which is this and one of these in this set here or in this arrangement i have used the wax flower and a couple of the other things so the foliage again and it's actually the same thing here but i used it like pointing the other direction and attaching the separate leaf to here so you can build on in fact I'll show you if you haven't seen this before so here's what you can do with those leaves you can really make them look completely new so it's the same what I just showed you individual leaves or that cluster of two you can do a lot of things again every time making them look completely new and there is a few more examples so you can stamp them straight onto the flower as well without these longer bits here uh, so you just ink it up up to here and again makes it look completely different so there's a huge number of things you can do with these sets they're absolutely amazing in my opinion <laughs> in my humble opinion okay and then this little guy here is also from the floral set so again they are designed in such a way that you can still bring them together uh, the new uh, wildflower sets and the existing floral sets together and create more variation there and more bouquets um, here is a simpler version now again the face base but using it upside down if you want to just showcase one flower and keep it nice and elegant and um, simple but then you can do some doodling on the actual vase so that's also quite pretty and then this is the tutorial that i have created showing you step by step so you have a three-step video um, one the first video is showing you how to build these clusters so how to connect for instance if you can see here on that rosebud it's just a rosebud there is no uh, connection to it but i'm showing you how to create it uh, how to make a kind of connected floral arrangement out of it and not just have individual pieces so for instance here as you can see they just stamped up to here and then i connected it so that's the first video second video is all about doodling and how to um, then um, doodle them out and create this type of thing and then the third step is the fun watercolor step which I love bringing the colors and making the piece come alive and again I think I've done the doodling off camera here on the vase after I finished 
just to add a little bit more pizzazz to it but it's totally optional and finally this is something i worked on last night and i put this picture on instagram i absolutely love it because this is now becoming art like you can take these stamp sets and make it into a beautiful piece of finished art uh, what you can do here is you can create if you want to really simplify it and sort of take this out you can create a frame like a border and if you're someone who loves journaling then you'd have a nice little border here at the bottom and all this space in your paper on the page to journal or if you want to stick any pictures or anything like that now to do that first first step what i've done here is i used a number of these uh, dewdrop um, chalk inks and so this is the mango oasis green turquoise jam and aquatic splash and i have then basically done, taken the lavender stamp set and stamped it on different levels so some of them higher some of them lower in the different colors and that was it then i colored it in with the Tombow markers. This is the candy color. So these three, uh, they work beautifully. A bit of water to make it look a bit more watercolory. And that's what I've done. For the yellow flowers, I actually stamped them in the mango. And the pink flowers, originally I stamped them in pink, but then it just went on and kind of built upon it. So the girl's face is done uh, with the FOTD stamp set. On the eyes I have used this beautiful turquoise color which um, basically the face, the flowers is all done with the polychromos pencils. So in case you wonder the eye was done with the light cobalt turquoise and it's a beautiful color for for the eye makeup and then the rest was mixture of all sorts of different colors I wouldn't be able to recall now but oops this one is not from here so these are the colors uh, I'm, I've got another um, container of them actually so I'm quite proud of my polychromos I have been um, collecting them slowly buying two or three pencils here and there and I'm quite happy with what I have here so you don't have to go and buy the entire big set you can just once in a while pop into your art store and pick a few colors and that way it will be a lot lighter and easier on your pocket um because they are quite pricey per pencil you buy uh, you pay about two and a half quid um here in uk so yeah not not cheap at all okay so i created her skin complexion using number of colors done the shading and also then I went ahead and decided to over the yellow to start uh, using the pencils as well and that kind of worked really well because then you have this sort of colors coming together and it has the typical colored pencil um, texture to it which actually is really pretty and I haven't tried it before typically I like to use my stamp sets with watercolors but again you can change it up a little bit and create something different so um, that's another thing you can do and that is it for today so I hope you got some inspiration out of it and enjoyed sort of um, the the ideas that you can take it so much further than just stamping uh, you know stamp a uh, clear stamp and, and that is it so you can do loads more so from something like this you can go all the way here <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and see you soon